Hey everyone, Karen Dubs here, FlexibleWarrior.com. I'm here with my friend, a running coach and endurance coach, Katie Heil, and we are going to do a short foam roll and stretch specific for runners today. So I hope you'll join me, dust off your, roller, uh, your foam roller and get your yoga mat out. You're gonna take your hands onto your roller and just sit your hips back onto your heels. This is just a nice way to start. I want you to take a deep breath into your low back and really try to expand your rib cage making sure you're carving out this next 15 minutes or so for practicing self-care to balance out all the hard work that you do. So take one more nice deep breath in through your nose. Exhale, trying to drop tension. And then go ahead and shift forward. So what we're gonna do is spend about uh, five minutes foam rolling around our legs to loosen up. So um, go ahead and let's start with our quads. So go ahead and come down to your forearms. And um, you can bend up your knees if you want to, or just straight legs. And so you're just gonna drag forward and back, and we'll do about a minute on each body part. So you don't wanna hit your kneecap. Um, you wanna finish right before you come to the top of the knee, and you're just hitting the quads. And here's the thing that you can try. If you have a, a bigger roller like I do, this is a high density, uh, longer roller. Um, you can take your legs out into a wide straddle like this and turn your toes in and out so you're hitting different parts of your quad. And then if you wanted to, like I said earlier, you can bend up your knees and that exposes the quads a little bit more and you might feel a little bit more, yeah? Yeah. So making sure that you're working on good core strength here, belly pulled in and up, no slumping in the posture, deep breaths in and out through the nose, and also really important that you're hydrated before and after and really during um, any foam rolling because that helps to flush out. All right, so let's just do uh, two more swipes forward and back. Feeling hopefully a little bit more loose in the quads already. Let's do one more. And then we're gonna go to the side, everybody's favorite, the IT bands. So you're gonna pivot to one side and you just wanna make sure that you're lined up. So you don't wanna be rolling forward or back. The foot that's out in front or on top, you can bring it out in front. You're really gonna push down with that foot and then you're gonna drag forward and back. So you wanna be to right to the outside of your hip. And again, if you push through that foot that's out in front, you're gonna get a little less sensation if you want more sensation and you're really tough, you're going to stack your feet on top of each other and drag forward and back. Now, that's not for everybody. Um, it might be a little bit too much sensation for you. So do what feels good for your body. But again, we're gonna take about a minute here. If you do happen to find little trigger points, little sore spots, maybe hang out on that specific spot and just kind of rock and roll a little bit back and forth on that spot. So this is great to do before you stretch because it helps warm up the tissue. And so we're gonna do a nice combo, a little foam rolling first, and then a nice stretch session. Okay, so one more time forward and back. How are you doing, Katie? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, come back to center, and then just do a few swipes forward and back on your quads just to loosen up. Sometimes if you go through this more than once, you know, hit the body part a second time, it feels a little bit looser. Yeah you know, already, so that's a good thing. So let's just do one more, and then we'll get the IT band on the other side, and sometimes you're gonna feel it more on one side than the other, so just notice that. So go ahead and pivot to the other side. Come up to your forearm, core engaged, posture open, and go ahead and drag forward and back. So again, I always like to remind people, the, way, the reason I say posture open is because we don't wanna be slumping down into the shoulder. You wanna keep the belly pulled in and up. Of course, deep breathing in and out through the nose. If you're really feeling tight, notice what you're doing with your hands, like if you're really clenching up your jaw or your hands, try to relax your jaw and your hands as well. And breathe in and out through your nose. So again, you are going to push through that top foot to lessen the sensation. Or if you want more sensation, you want a little bit more intensity, like you're a deep tissue person, you'd stack your feet on top of each other. Again, not for everybody. If you've been doing a lot of mileage, really maybe not um, the day to do that. So let's do a couple more swipes forward and back. Oh yeah, feel that loosening up. This is gonna make your stretching a lot more effective. And then go ahead and come off of your roller. And so now we hit the quads and the IT bands. We're gonna do a little bit of hip flexor and groin inner thigh next. So you're gonna um, take the roller off to your side and your knee's gonna be down on the mat. 
This is sort of hard to see, but I want you to just isolate right here, right below your hip bone where your quad attaches, okay, your hip flexor. So you're kind of pivoting right to the center. And then just a very small muscle group, like two inches forward and back. So turn, yep, there you go. Okay. Yeah, and this one we do our hip flexor stretch during the stretch section. Um, you're gonna feel a little bit more open in your hip flexors. Okay, okay good. And then from there, this is a little bit different too. You're going to take the roller and line it up to the long side of your mat and then stack your knee out to the side, runaway ball there. Uh, knee out to the side just like this for groin inner thigh. <laughs> so you're gonna roll out. So the roller comes towards your groin inner thigh and in. And this one, again, a lot of people are really typically really tight in the groin and our thigh and they don't even know it. Don't even know it, yep. don't even know it until you start doing this. Um, such a great thing to do. Um, and you're gonna get, you get a nice stretch with it too. So as you roll the roller you know, towards you and your knee out to the side and you'll feel the stretch. All right. Notice where you're feeling these the most. You can always go back and do it a second time through. Okay, perfect. Let's get the hip flexor on the other side. So take the roller out, again, knees down on the floor. You're gonna stack up on the roller. And then just hit that hip flexor. So it's just the very top of the muscle group, right here where the, you know, it's just a small muscle group right at the top of the thigh, okay? So some people are gonna feel that a lot. If you have a lot of hip flexor issues, you'll feel that pretty intense. And then other people are like, yeah, I don't feel that so much. Yeah. So there's no right or wrong, just, you know, whatever. Just notice. Okay, good. And then from there, we're gonna do groin inner thigh on this side. So roller goes parallel to the outside edge of your long, the long side of your mat. And then knee out to the sides, so you're stacking your back knees on the mat. And then you roll the roller in towards you and the knee away from you. Again, the closer that it gets to the groin inner thigh, the more you're gonna feel it. It's a little where the attachment of the muscle is to the joint, that's where you feel a little bit more. I like to do the whole way around the lower body. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do for your, with the foam roller, um, but I like to work around the whole, you know, quad, hamstring, hip, uh, groin, inner thigh, hip flexor before you do your stretching. Again, if you take like five minutes to do this, it's amazing. Consistency is the key though. So massages are great, um, but doing this in addition to your massages, really good idea. Okay, one more time. Perfect. Go ahead and push yourself up and bring the roller behind you and have a seat just like this. So now we're gonna do uh, glutes and hamstrings. So with your feet out in front of you, your hands will be behind you, behind the roller. Just cross your right ankle over your left knee, drop your right knee over to the side. You might feel that already. And then I like to take my left hand and put it on my right knee just like that. And that just helps you guide things around. Like I like to make a circle around, you know, getting lots of different points in your hip. Mm -hmm. And then you can also go cross fiber like this, you know, rock it forward and back, you know, from side to side. Again, just be aware what you're doing with your right arm, right shoulder, belly in, chest open, breathing, relaxing your jaw. If you find a spot that's really feeling tight, right, a little trigger point, spend a little bit more time there, maybe, you know, just kind of cross fiber, rock it, right, and side, right, right to left, side to side. Mm -hmm. Yes, feels really good. It's definitely a hurt so good sensation. <laughs> yeah. Again, hydration is really key, so make sure you're gonna drink a lot of water. Ooh. After you do this, and it's, <laughs> it's not about never falling. It's about brushing ourselves off and keep going. Perfect. Okay, let's do the other side. So put your right foot down, cross your left ankle over. I like to flex this foot. So you're just in a pigeon stretch sort of position. Right hand across onto the left knee, drop over to the side. Oh, I always feel it so much more on my left hip. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just notice that what you're feeling a little bit more, a little bit less. And then once we get to the stretches, because we will do a pigeon stretch next, one of our favorites. And the sequence today is gonna be some of Katie's favorite post-run stretches, yes? Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, good. Again, remember you can go around in a circle, you can go from side to side, seek out the trigger point. So if you do happen to have a sore spot that's a little bit more tender, spend a little bit more time on that spot instead of avoiding the spot. So go into the sore spots. All right, perfect. So from there, let's do hamstrings. So <clears throat> you're gonna um, have your hands out behind you. I'll pivot, you can stay where you are, but I'll pivot a little bit to the side and then you're just gonna drag forward and back like this. So same thing like we did with the quads, if you make this sort of circular motion, pivot your big toes in and your pinky toes out, that way you're hitting different parts of your hamstring. If you want more sensation, you wanna feel a little bit more, cross your right ankle over your left shin, and that way you're obviously putting a little bit more weight in, and you're gonna feel a little bit more, but still continue to turn kinda in and out, hitting different parts of the hammy. And what are you doing with your posture and your breathing? Belly in, chest open, heart high, switching legs if you did one leg, if you switched. Again, pivot in and out, stir it around, seek out the sore spots. If you find a little spot that's more tender, you know, like a little knot, like hold on that spot and maybe rock into it a little bit more. Nice, feeling it good? Yeah. Okay. So from there, um, we'll give the arms a little bit of a break and we'll do calves with the, I'll, I'll um, get to that next. So we're gonna do our backs really quick because I think our backs tend to get tight, you know, with a lot of endurance sports or sports in general. So um, hands can be behind the head so you have a little bit of support and then just roll on your spine. So lumbar curve of the spine, if that tends to get tight, thoracic spine, upper middle back, you know, just, um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because we're really focusing on lower body legs and hips. Um, but just know that this is such a great thing to do to loosen up your spine, especially after your long runs, you know, and the back tends to get tight. Such a good thing to do to keep a healthy spine. Okay, one more time. And release out of that. Awesome, you guys. So go ahead and sit up. So <clears throat> we're gonna demonstrate calf quick using the roller, but I'm also gonna introduce to you this myofascial release ball because I think it's such a cheap, wonderful thing to do for your feet and for your calves. So we'll talk about that in a second. But if you um, wanna start with just your roller um, with your calf, your left foot is gonna be behind the roller, your right foot out straight, and then you're just gonna roll just like this around on your calf. I like to have the foot behind because the more that you push with that foot, the more you take out of the arms because there is an upper body strength component to all of this rolling. Um, but same thing, if you wanna make it a little bit more intense, you cross the foot over just like we did with a hamstring and that way get a little bit more intensity, okay? Same thing, switch sides. So start with your foot behind the roller and you know, take a little time with that. Again, we're going through all of this, but you can go a second time through, a third time through, spend a little bit more time if you need to. Um, and then cross over top if you want more intensity, be aware of your posture and your breathing, core engaged, heart open, nice strong upper body. Beautiful, okay. And then you can, did I do this both calves together? You can certainly do both calves together. I don't love that because it does require a lot of upper body, but um, certainly do that if that feels good for you. And then I just wanna demo this quick because I think this is so important. Your, your feet, um, keeping your feet healthy, limber, massaged out. These myofascial release balls, they cost about like four bucks. Mm -hmm. I'll include the link in the notes of this video in case you wanna grab one. Um, and so we'll do calves with this and feet, okay? So I prefer it with a yoga block. If you have, if you don't have a yoga block, you can always use a book or something. Oh, yeah. And then you just put the ball on top of the block. And the thing that I love about this is that it targets, like it's a pinpoint, instead of the roller is kind of a big, um, like steamroller <laughs> effect, this is more targeted. And so you can really focus on like just finding the little spots in your calf that might be really sore and tight, okay? So you can certainly um, try that, do both legs. So again, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on this. I just, you can certainly use a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball also, but um, they're not as good, honestly. The tennis balls are a little too soft. Lacrosse balls are a little too hard. These myofascial release balls are just, 
just right, like, like Goldilocks. <laughs> just perfect, yeah. Really makes a big difference to loosen up the tissue. Again, consistency is the key, so do this on a regular basis. Again, not spending a lot of time on this, I just wanted to introduce it. Um, another thing you can do for your calves, because you know Achilles calves, as they get really tight with a lot of endurance, um, really the chain goes up. So taking care of the feet, the ankles, the calves is really important. Um, you can also do this. So the ball goes right behind, so less is more. You don't have to sit the whole way down, especially if it's new for you. You don't wanna bruise yourself, but you sit back and forth. And you can have two of these balls too. They're great. I have a couple other videos on um, my YouTube channel to show how to use them for your back and your scapula and your neck and your shoulders, which we hold a lot of tension in as well. So you can check out those other videos. But you just kind of rock on, rock off. And then you can always just have a seat on it for a while. So if you do have a trigger point, I mean, I'm used to doing this, so this is not a problem for me. It might be excruciating. If it's new for you, work up to it. Um, but you can always just have a seat on it and you know work on those little tight spots in the Achilles um, yeah, and the calf soleus. and soleus, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so just wanted to introduce that. And then very lastly, you can um, do your feet. So you can actually stand up all the way. You can do it in a lunge position like this. You can also um, sitting in a chair. So let's just imagine this is my chair. You know, sitting watching TV, you can just roll your foot around you know, like this, or you can do it in a standing position too, which allows you to put more, you know, body weight into it. So, um, you know, I just wanna, again, just introduce these because they are such a great, inexpensive, yeah. easy tool to use to keep your feet and your ankles and your calves healthy, yeah. okay? So once you spend a good five, maybe eight minutes loosening up the tissue with this myofascial release work, we're gonna do some stretches. So you can move your, your foam roller out of your way and go ahead and come into child's pose for just a moment. Take a drink, drink of water if you need to. Make sure you stay hydrated. Take a deep breath. And exhale. We're gonna go ahead and shift forward on your next inhale. Come into downward facing dog. So now that your calves, your feet, your ankles are all warmed up, really pedal out the heels, trying to reach the heels back to the back edge of your mat getting that great stretch of the calf and the ankles. Bring awareness to your hands, really press down evenly through both palms. And now go ahead and just press your right heel down. What I want you to do is take your left foot and hook it behind your right ankle. That's just such a really great stretch, again, for the calf, the soleus, Achilles, and really attaching into the bottom of your foot. Take one more nice deep breath here, get that great stretch. And then go ahead and switch to the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna bend your right knee, press your left heel down, and cross your right ankle behind your left, sorry, your right foot behind your left ankle. Get that good stretch. Take one more nice deep breath. And then go ahead and put both feet down. Shift forward, come into plank pose, just engage the core, open the chest, squeeze the thighs, shift a little bit into the toes, bend the elbows, come all the way down to your mat. Inhale into a little baby cobra. Take a nice deep breath in. Make sure you're pulling your shoulders down, hugging your elbows in, and then push back to child's pose. So we're gonna come into a low lunge neck. So go ahead and shift your weight forward. Step your right foot up and through your hands. Again, these are a few of Katie's favorite stretches. Just make sure that your knee is right out over your ankle. You're gonna curl your left toes under, squeeze your left knee straight. Make sure you're aware of what you're doing with your hands. So you wanna squeeze your left knee as straight as you can. Drop your hips low, and then maybe just rock a little bit forward and back from the toe and press back through the heel. Try to move with your breath. Really keep that left knee squeezing as straight as you can. Dropping your hips low. This is such a great stretch for the hip flexor. Let's take two more breaths, rocking forward and back. Good. And then go ahead and release the left knee back down to the mat. If your knee is sensitive, you can always pad underneath the knee, like slide a towel underneath the back knee. Take a deep breath and really lift the chest, pull the shoulders back. And as you exhale, you're gonna pull back to runner's lunge. So you're just gonna pull your tailbone back towards your uh, back heel. Think of lifting up the chest, pulling the shoulders back. And then as you exhale, you'll fold out over your right leg. So this is such an incredible hamstring stretch. I just want you to be mindful of a second of what you're doing with your spine. 
So think of just lengthening back with your tailbone very gently, pulling slightly forward with your chest, and then folding out over that right leg so you're getting that nice stretch through your hamstring. Take two more breaths. And so really trying to slow down, practice that chill power element, balancing out all of your hard work. On your next inhale, shift your weight forward. We're gonna curl the left toes under, squeeze the left knee straight, and we're gonna come into a single leg downward dog. So this is a little bit of a transition. If it's new for you, just watch first. So your right leg's gonna come straight up towards the ceiling, and you're gonna push evenly through both hands. Take a nice deep breath, really reach through your right toes, and then we're coming into pigeon next. So the right knee's gonna come to the right wrist, and we're gonna slide the left toes back, and then come all the way down onto your forearms. So this is a more advanced pigeon. I'm just gonna show you, if you feel this at all, and Katie's hips are open, really more you know, flexible as far as endurance athletes are concerned. If you're feeling this at all in your right knee, I'm gonna show you a variation, or you can do what Katie's doing and just enjoy your pigeon stretch. So this is a great hip opener. This is the variation that you can try. If you were feeling that at all in your knee, you would just fold your right ankle over your left knee, sort of like we did earlier, when we were doing the foam roll sequence, and then you would just be doing it in a reclined position. So this is the same stretch, different position, a lot less pressure on the knee. So wherever you are, take one more nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, really try to allow the weight of your body to just melt down into the stretch, really opening up the tight places in your hip. and then support yourself up. Make sure you take the time to separate your hands shoulder width distance apart. Curl your left toes under, step into plank pose. We're gonna come all the way down onto the belly and get a quad stretch on that right leg. So just fold your left forearm out in front of you, just like this. You're gonna reach around and grab the top of your right foot with your right hand. Now just gently squeeze the glutes and press the hips into your mat. So this is just a nice stretch for your quad and your hip flexor. If you want a little bit more intensity with a stretch, you can press to your left forearm, lift your chest up, and reach your right toes up to the ceiling. If that feels like any pressure on your knee or just uncomfortable in any way, just back out of it and do a little less, guiding your heel towards your right glute. Again, a little squeeze with the glutes, pressing the hip bones into the mat, you'll get a little bit of a deeper stretch. And then go ahead and release out of it. Hands under shoulders, push back to child's pose. And we will get all of that on the other side. So go ahead and shift your weight forward. Step your left foot up and in between your hands. Again, make sure that knee is right out over your ankle. You're gonna curl your right toes under, squeeze your right knee straight, shoulders back, hips low. And then just a little bit of a rock forward and back. Inhale as you draw forward, exhale as you push back through your heel. Inhale, exhale, just take your time and just really notice the openness that you're creating through that right hip flexor. Let's do one more rock forward and back. And then go ahead and release your right knee down to the mat. Again, if you wanna pad underneath that right knee, a towel or something, if it feels sensitive, take a deep breath in, lift your chest and then pull back for runner's lunge. So tailbone is reaching back towards your right heel Breathing is smooth and deep. Be mindful of your spine. So you just want to pull your tailbone up and back a little bit. Pull slightly forward with your chest. And then feel free to fold out over that left leg just to get a deeper stretch. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale. Go a little bit deeper into your stretch without forcing. It's not about getting a straight leg either. So if your leg is straight, that's great. Wonderful, go with it. But if the knee feels better bent because the hamstrings are tight, then feel free to stay with a bent knee. And then on your next inhale, go ahead and shift your weight forward. You're gonna curl your right toes under, squeeze your right knee straight. This is that tricky transition. So uh, watch first if you need to, but you're gonna send that left leg straight up to the ceiling. Push evenly through both palms. Really reach through your left toes. Take a deep breath in. And then bring the left knee to the left wrist for pigeon. So remember that variation if you wanted to take it. You're gonna point your right toes and slide your right foot back. And if you're taking this um, <clears throat> variation, you're just gonna bring your forearms down or you can lie down on your back. 
Bring your left ankle over your right knee and do this recline version of pigeon, okay? So think like a warrior, meaning honor, protect, listen to your body, no judgment, making sure that you're making a choice that works for your body the best. All right, awareness on breathing, deep breaths in and out through the nose. That helps to send that calming sensation through the central nervous system. Great to practice those deep breaths before a race as well. So I always say it's survival of the calmest. It's not always the, the athlete that's the most mentally or physically prepared, but it's the person that can be the calmest and save all of your good energy for what's important. Take one more huge breath in, really sending that calming message through your body. And then prepare to come up. Spread your fingertips out wide right underneath your shoulders. Curl your right toes under, engage your core, and step to plank. <clears throat> and then shift to your toes, bend your elbows all the way down onto your stomach. Bring your right forearm out in front of you. Reach around, grab the top of your left foot with your left hand. This is your quad stretch. So you wanna squeeze the glutes a little bit, press the hips into the floor, and then you just gently kick the top of your left foot into your left hand. And then I'm gonna give you this variation if you wanna try it. Reach around, grab the tops of both feet into both hands. So one hand on, on the top of each foot. This is called bow pose. This is a great stretch to open up the whole front line of the body. Chest, shoulders, quad, hip flexors. One more breath, really kick your toes up to the ceiling and feet into the hands. And then release out of it. Hands under the shoulders, push back, counter pose in child's pose. <clears throat> We're gonna do one more downward facing dog. So shift your weight forward, curl your toes, lift all the way up and pedal out right and left. And again, just notice how much more open your body feels even after that, you know, 10, 15 minutes of stretching and foam rolling. <clears throat> and then go ahead and release your knees down. Have a seat, cross one leg on top of the other, sit up as tall as you can, bring your hands together in prayer. Lift and open your chest, take a deep breath in, gather your good positive energy and strength. Exhale, bring it in and back to your heart center. Thanks for joining us. If you wanna find out more, again, go to flexiblewarrior.com. I'll see you again soon, bye.